that you were ripped off on your pay-per-view? Wouldn't you be lawyering up right now and coming in with your audit team to come in and, and check the books? Yeah, you would. Did he ever inquire about that, about taking advantage of that opportunity? Oh, he, he's going to come, he's going to pay some auditors to come in and they're going to tell him you've been paid every dime you're supposed to be paid. We've been doing this stuff now for 13 years. If we weren't paying guys, what they were, not only do we pay guys what they were supposed to be paid, we pay them more money than they were supposed to be paid. So everything that the guy says is complete bullshit. You know, when you start digging so deep that you're talking about your fucking action figure deal. I had an action figure deal, then they did a deal with the company, you know? Listen, Rampage, if you're not happy here, you go somewhere else and you work. Good luck to you. You know, I, I've got no beef with Rampage. I got no, uh, you know, ill will toward him. I don't, you know, I'm not gonna out to hurt Rampage or anything like that. He, he's not happy, go somewhere else. Go somewhere where, where you can be made happy. With the statements that he has made, are you willing to still talk to him, at least consider the option? We're not talking, we're not. Uh, I mean, I talked to his manager a few days ago, you know, and uh, you know, he kind of told me what they're looking at and what they're doing and stuff, but good luck to him, man. And, and I think, to be honest with you, I think Rampage said it better himself. This is a quote from Rampage. I don't think I can compete with the best in the world anymore. I don't think I'm at that level anymore. I'll just go out and put on some entertaining fights that people want to watch. So as far as you can see, I'll close the door and Rampage coming back. Yeah. How's tough going with Jay and John? Has there, you know, returns on that, the numbers? good yeah no it's great yeah, yeah. Um, on two, uh, last Tuesday we pulled the highest 18 to 34 year old male in the history of tough on FX nice. well I'm curious if, if you're getting people telling you oh we're gonna get jail fatigue you know since he's on that show he's on UFC tonight he's got a fight coming up I mean he's fast becoming the face in a way of UFC and just I'm curious what your thoughts are he's on a the busy guy yeah who, <laughs> on the people who are just detractors from that you know um People are, what, people well, are some people say it's too much, you know what I mean? Well, he spent about he's a year and a half doing absolutely nothing. I'm <laughs> sure he's happy to be busy again. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, he, he he's a grown man. He'll have to make the decision on whether he's... But it's true. I, I'm not kidding you guys. Every day, we were just talking today. There's there's a, a movie with De Niro and, and, uh, and uh, Stallone, and they want jail. He's movie. great. It's like, everybody <laughs> wants jail right now. Yeah. Dana, what was the situation of the fight between Anderson and Weidman and the idea to make this fight in Brazil? Who told you that? No, Ed, Ed <laughs> you want in, uh, oh, Ed, White, White, in the Weidman say Ed making fights and <laughs> locations and... No. Yeah, no, that, 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 that fight won't be in Brazil. No. If Weidman and him fight, that fight won't be in Brazil. And about the rumor? It's uh, not, uh, we don't have a fight schedule in Brazil at that time. And about the rumor, the fight between Anderson wanted to fight like Kung Lee. What that that, that what? Uh, uh, about the rumor of Anderson wanting to fight like Kung Not true either. Yeah, the, 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 those two aren't going to fight. Would you consider you know, a shot? Huh? Would you consider a shot? I would consider a shot. Is that one if Rashad won at, uh, on Saturday night and wanted to go to 85, we would consider that. Okay, is that your preference? Considering it. You said you had two different scenarios you were considering for Anderson's next fight. Are those the two options? Um, if Rashad wins and wants to go down to the way he would be it, or yeah. Chris Weidman? Yeah. Uh, would, you, good. would you consider Rashad a catch weight or a 205? Would, would you consider Rashad at a catch weight or a 205 if Rashad had a difficulty? How would that make sense? my friend, to make them fight at a catchweight. Or to the title. Sort of I can sort of hear Mike, but if Anderson Silva is the 185 pound champion, why would Rashad move down unless it was for a title? He'd want to win the title. But he's also said he wants to fight Anderson. He, he, he doesn't know if he can make 185. And, and I guess he down. can't fight Anderson. I mean, if you're going to fight him, you got Chris Weidman there. And uh, here's the thing. If, if a lot of people think that Chris Weidman is the number one contender right now, if Rashad made a move from 205 down to 185, it would be tough to say that he's not the number one contender. But if he can't make 185 pounds, what would be the point in doing it in catch weight? It would make no sense. So would Other than he just wants to fight Anderson Silva. So would you, in that scenario, but we don't know if he can make 185, he would have to start making, uh, I guess, practice cuts to see if he can make it before you move. I agree. Dana, where do you see the drop hole fitting into this mix? Um, we're talking about doing uh, him and Vitor. And is there any definite date or plan set for that yet? <coughs> we're working on it though. That's, that's one of the ones we're looking at.
Huh? Any expansion talks moving into new countries, anything like that? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this year we're going into, uh, where the hell are we going this year? I can't remember, but yes, the answer is yes, we're going somewhere this year. How's Russia? Is that, is that <laughs> Russia, a real yeah, Russia, possible? Russia, we're working on Russia, and uh, you know, we're still working on our move into India. But yeah, what we're going, what's really cranking right now is Brazil. Brazil is off the chart crazy, which, you know, it's, it's to the point now where Lorenzo is going to start spending a lot of time in Brazil. A lot of time. What about the issue with the Sao Paulo government, that, the whole financial situation there? Is that, is that a detractor to turn it all, or is it a challenge? It's just, it's just all, it's all part of the business. I mean, every time we go into a new country, there's always some challenges. And, and, you know, we still don't have New York here. You know, this, you know, we've been working on this country for 13 years. Um, Getting closer. <laughs> who knows? And, and, and as we get, uh, you know, as we get into these new territories, you're always gonna, always gonna come into problems and roadblocks and obstacles. So it's all part of the deal. So no chance that that slows things down a little bit. So I know how hot you know, the, the market is, but you know, if you're not getting the financial backing you need, is, is, that, is there a chance that slows things down? Financial backing in Brazil is the least of our worries. You know, the, the economy is off the charts down there. You know, the, the fifth or fourth largest economy in the world. The sport literally is growing right now we're speaking. It's, just, it's, it's a monster. It's unbelievable. And uh, Lorenzo's going to be learning some Portuguese. And uh, he's going to be spending some time down there. But it's a problem to make a distance with a government, not with a, a company. Because in Sao Paulo, uh, the department... We've been, we've been dealing with government since the day we bought these companies. You know, not just here in the United States. I mean, there's so many stories that you guys don't know. From England to, I mean, all over the world where we've been. Stories that, that never hit the media, you know? Events that almost got canceled the day before we were about to go live worldwide on pay-per-view. Things like that, that we handle behind the scenes that nobody even knows about. We've been dealing with government since the day we bought this company. Are you close to do like a big fight in the stadium in Brazil? Or? Depends on the fight. I mean, the three places we could do a stadium fight is Canada, United States, or Brazil. That, those would be the realistic three places we could do it. It would depend on the fight. If you're saying Anderson fight wouldn't be in Brazil, I don't know. Yeah. Might be Why Vegas. Because we're not scheduled for We already have our schedule. No, that's not Why scheduled. Why are you going Brazil. back to Brazil? I don't know the answer to that question. I had heard that you were starting out a 115 men's strawweight division. When are you looking at maybe targeting that and implementing that weight class? Yeah, what I said was that we, we eventually will. As we move into uh, Mexico and all these other Hispanic territories that we're going into, as we go into Asia, you know, we, we will need a 115 pound division. I'm not about it. And it will happen someday. Was there not, like working on that for a second? I mean, it'll be featured more like on regional shows in that country because I've heard a lot of blowback from fans with that news thing. And we don't need 115. We don't need 115. Does it mean that those fights will be more like on regional shows in, in those cards? They decide what the fuck we need and don't need. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. No. If 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 we if we put on more shows and go into these territories and you have a lot of guys that are smaller guys and weigh that, we'll end up with a 115 pound division. You know, it's like the, the, how many knuckleheads were talking smack about you know. Um, Demetrius Johnson and all these other, and look at the fight the other night on Fox. It was awesome. That fight was amazing. You know, I, I don't listen to that bullshit. When people say stuff like that, it's just, you're looking for something to bitch about. You know what I mean? What do you care what these guys weigh as long as they're, you never know. You could have a guy come out of, you know, at 115 that fights like Anderson and destroys people. And he's exciting and fun to watch. You know, and it could be a, 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 a division that's full of talent, yet this guy stands out and it's, you don't know what's going to happen. You know, for people to for people to say, oh, this shouldn't happen, that shouldn't happen. People said that about the 155 pounders at one time. Imagine if we never had 155 pounders because 42 fucking fans thought we shouldn't. You know what I mean? It'd be a tragedy. Obviously, we have the featherweight title on the line here, but I'm curious what your thoughts are on Ricardo Lamas after his, you know, destruction of uh, Eric Cook. Yeah, he looked awesome. Yeah. Uh, so how does he fit in the mix now? Because obviously, you know, we have Chad Mendes has been winning and all, you know, now it's like a division that used to not have enough guys all of a sudden seems like has a lot of good guys. I agree. I agree. So who's going to fight next? I don't know. Yeah. But we, we got some fun fights lined up yes. in that division, you know, just because it is so stacked and there's so many talented guys. Yeah. If Aldo wins on Saturday and beats a former yeah. lightweight champion, um, does he have anything left to do with him? That's up to him. I mean, the guy can stay at 145 for the rest.
rest of his life if he wants to. It's like the Anderson thing, you know. I'd love to see Anderson at 205. I think if Anderson moved up to 205 pounds, it would be so fun. I mean, people would go crazy over that if he started to work his way up in the 205 pound division. Take, you know, a number one contender. If he wins, he fights for the title, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, what we're looking at is probably more of a super fight with him and John Jones or something eventually. But um, if, if, if Aldo wanted to stay there or move up to 55, which he said he does want to do, that would be cool. The 10 fights deal with Huh? The 10 fights deal with Anderson Sign? Uh, no. Still working on it. Do you think we'll Anderson would entertain fighting Rashad at 205? Do I think what? Anderson would entertain fighting Rashad at 205? I don't know. I, I just don't... It, let's, say, let's say they fight at 205. Um, other than beating Anderson Silva, what does it really do for Rashad? You know what I mean? Rashad's at 205. If you're not going to fight Anderson Silva and win the title, you know? I don't know. What are your thoughts on Nick Diaz at the George St. Pierre uh, press conference? Were you impressed by the way he carried himself and responded to the media? Yeah, um, and the fans. He hung out and took pictures and you know, signed autographs for the fans. You know, uh, there's no doubt Nick Diaz is uncomfortable in that situation. He doesn't like it. He's uncomfortable in it, you know, and, and, and he stepped up and he was a pro and came and did what he had to do. You know, believe me, when you're in the middle of a camp or you got stuff going on and all the things that you have going on in your life, it's never fun to just pick up and take off. And these guys, you know, they answer the same questions over and over again. And, and, and some people, you know, hate it, like hate it, hate it. Some people don't mind it. Some people love it. He, all the three that I just described, he's a complete different. He, he absolutely, it's not that even that he hates it, it's like he has a hard time doing it. You can just tell that he's really uncomfortable and it bothers him. He did what he was supposed to do. He acted like a pro. Showed up to everything on time. Did everything he was supposed to do. And uh, in a fight, and he gets back into training. You know, he's been off for a year, and he made that very clear at the press conference. He kept saying, "I've been off for a year. I've had a lot of time to kick back, time to think." Because the one thing that he used to say at the press conferences, these guys keep throwing me in fight after fight. He's talking about Strike Force because he had just come to the UFC. You know, and and, I, and you get it. If you're Strike Force, you need Nick Diaz to fight as much as possible. It's not like they had this overload of talent um, that, that, that were big draws. So you want to keep Nick Diaz, Diaz active and keep him fighting. So he felt like he had been fighting all this time. Now he's had a year off, but once he gets back into training and, and, and starts doing the PR and all the bullshit again, we'll see Nick back again. I, I guarantee it. Dana, going back to uh, Open the Fighter for a second, you know, it's a couple of episodes in, this thing has a great new look to it now, it looks like prime time, Thank you. a lot of changes. Can you kind of take us behind the scenes, the planning of that 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 new look? Was it quick? Was it a long process? How involved were you in your thoughts? Yeah, um, so, you know, we've tried a lot of different things. And one thing that, that's been fun over at Fox is we've tried a lot of things. We tried live. Live didn't work too well. Um, I still like the idea of live, but it didn't work too well. Uh, we went back to the old format. Didn't work out. If the fights weren't great that season, the coaching was a little, you know. So this season we went back to the drawing board again, and uh, it was actually uh, Eric Shanks from Fox uh, said, you know, <coughs> he wanted to make some tweaks to the production, and, and that's what you see now. That was that was Eric's idea, and uh, we loved it from the minute we started shooting. So the minute we started editing, right up until it aired, we loved this season. I, I came out and said this season's great, and it's just getting going. This is a great season of The Ultimate Fighter. We're proud of it, and uh, yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was Eric Shanks. Was there any one element of it that surprised you as far as, like say, uh, you know, bringing in the families to watch the fight? Something that, you know, may have looked interesting that on was paper, us. but once you actually We did saw that, it. because as we started looking at the, uh, the previous seasons, and a lot of complaints that people had were, when the fights to get in the house, you can hear a pin drop. And sometimes me and the coaches are talking, sometimes we're not talking, we're watching the fights. Um, so we thought that we try to bring the families in and see how it worked, and I loved it. I loved it. I feel like right from the first episode, you start, you learn more about the guys. You get to know, it's about knowing the, the, the fighters and the characters and their backstory and, and being invested and caring about, um, and, and caring about the fights. So I think, I think that worked really well. And it was fun. It was fun having all those people in there. You know, it's, it's like being in a real fight. A lot of people wondering, 
Yeah. Uh, wondering, uh, asking me, where are the fights going to go? Since fuel may change some things, FX is not going to have the fights. People are really curious about where the fights are going to go and how many more homes you know, will, will you now reach with the change? It's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, we've been working on this for a year. We knew all this stuff was happening. And like I've said a million times in the last couple of weeks, we're with guys, smart guys, aggressive guys who have a plan and are just in, as invested in the sport and in the brand as we are. So it's, it's, it's refreshing, it's, it's incredible, um, and uh, I don't want to announce anything. I'm not going to say anything until these guys are ready to announce and, and, and what the plans are and what we're going to do, but um, fans are going to be happy. When we, when we, we came bursting on the Fox out of nowhere. We, we, were, we were this close to doing a deal with another network, and we ended up doing the Fox deal, and the Fox deal came together like this. These guys scrambled, and put this whole thing together and made last year work for us because th that came out of left field. It's not like these guys had some strategy for the last two years. UFC's rights are coming up, so here's what we're gonna do. We'll go in there, we'll make a run at this UFC thing. We could, we could put this here, this here, this there. This thing happened out of nowhere. Came together in a minute and they moved a lot of shit around to make this happen for us. Um, and so over the last year we've been figuring out how, how all the pieces are going to fit, where they're going to go, long term, what are we going to do, and how does this work? So that's what, you know, it, it took a lot of time and a lot of hard work last year to get all this stuff together. And now, one year into the deal, everything is firing and everything is smooth and couldn't be better. The relationship couldn't be better. It's just, it's good stuff. But when they are ready to announce that stuff, I'll let them do it. Dana, in earlier seasons of The Ultimate Fighter, after the season was finished, you used to have a lot of the fighters come back fighting the UFC. I noticed that it's kind of been dwindling. Can you tell me what, why that is? And is what was the question? I was spaced out for a minute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, in the earlier seasons of The Ultimate Fighter, you'd see a lot of guys that you know didn't end up winning contracts or anything like that, but they would still fight in the UFC. Got it. Yeah, we have a lot of fighters. We have a lot of guys under contract. You know, and it's, it's basically a math game. You know, we have X amount of fighters, three fights a year. Da, 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 da. You know, if uh, that, that's why it, earlier on when the Ultimate Fighter first launched in the first however many seasons, we were just building. We were building the sport, building the brand, building everything. Now we're at a point where we're doing fights all over the world. We're on one of the biggest, you know, uh, uh, platforms in the world in Fox and all the other things that we're doing. We're in Globo and friggin' Brazil and, and the list goes on and on. And all these places and things we're doing stuff. The sport and the brand is more mature now than it was back then. So we could bring the guy, all the guys in. You know, this season, this season's so fucking good. That, and I was so happy with all the guys. I told them, every one of you guys are gonna fight. You're gonna get one more chance at the UFC. Every guy here is gonna get another chance at the UFC. Joe Silva wants to fucking kill me, okay? <laughs> it's impossible! It mathematically doesn't, I said, mathematically make it work. Do you have a Let's, fight for the Brazilian winner, Cesar Matanchi? Has he got a fight yet? Uh, he, he does, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get all those guys. We get a shot to get to the UFC again. Um, you know, even if we have to add one more fight on each card, however we have to do it, we're gonna get these guys a shot. But what is it about Obrim that is so intriguing to people? Why do you think he's he's reached such popularity? He hasn't fought that much in the UFC, but people see this. Because he's a beast. I mean, when you look at the guy, he is a he is an absolute friggin' beast. And you know, you, you don't see guys that look like him every day in the fight business. You know, um, he is an intriguing character, and I think people are drawn to see if he can win. People want to see if this guy can win the title. I want to see if he can win the title. Yeah, how, how big potentially? I mean, over in fighting for a title against say Velasquez on the field. I don't know how big could that be for you guys. I think it would be huge. Yeah, I think it'll be really big. I think it'll be a big fight. I think that's one of our big fights this year, if the, if he wins. Nick Diaz, uh, George St. Pierre's big fight for us this year. We make another one of these super fights this year. I think this card is, is a good card for this year. Um, if Overeem wins, how soon would you try to put something like him and Kane together? Like, maybe in the summer? Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, we have it. It's, you know, we have it all mapped out on what we'll do, just off the top of my head. I don't know right now. If Diaz goes and, and, and he dominates George, you say, do you entertain the thought of Nick versus Anderson Silva now? Yeah, well, he said, he said he wants to do it, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. You know, it's one of those things. I, I always, this is a segue for me to, to tell you guys something else, but I always want to put on the fights that the fans want to see. I, I, I truly believe that that's my job. My job is to put on fights that people want to watch. And with that, 
we, we, we're announcing today, it's going to come out, it's a press release coming out later, that we're starting uh, UFC rankings. We're going to have our own ranking system that rank UFC fighters. And uh, Fight Metrics is a company that we've been in business with for several years now. They, they you know, they, uh, they do all the stats on the fights and, the, you know, kicks, punch, takedowns, all this other stuff. So they're putting together a, a system for uh, the rankings. And 90 members of the media, uh, have, have they already got invitations? They're going to get them today. Invitations go out today to 90 media members. And there will probably end up being more. But the media votes uh, on, on the rankings. And I believe it's the Monday after this event, polls will go out, they'll come back, and we'll have the first ever UFC rankings. Is this an official partnership with Fight Metrics? Yeah. You resisted that. I did. Well, here's the thing. Well, I said I segue into that. No matter what the rankings are, I'm going to put on the fights. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. So the rankings are just a discussion point. It's, it's, the yeah, the, you know, the, there will be rankings. And listen, if the, if the, <laughs> I see some rankings out there that are fucking insane, you know, that, that, that make no sense, but... Again, I, I think you can put on fights with common sense, number one. Number two, at the end of the day, you've got to put on fights that fans want to see. It has to be a fight that people want to see. You know, everybody asks the question, does it make sense to do Anderson Silva versus John Jones? Eh, in a perfect world, it really doesn't. If you look at the way rankings work and guys have their weight classes and this and that, everything else makes no sense whatsoever. But a lot of fucking people want to see it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's, that's kind of how, how we do it. But a you, lot of people but, want to see that fight. Do, 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 do those, those, uh, you know, George and, and, and Anderson make sense. No, but a lot of people want to see it. But do you, you weigh that one? We will give consideration to the fight metric rankings if, say, a guy is number one. Absolutely. If the number one contender, Absolutely. then you're going to have to. Absolutely. Okay. What was the impetus for, for deciding to do the rankings? And what, you know, do, what does the U.S. say? Well, we, we thought that as the sport continues to grow and gets bigger and bigger and, and, and <coughs> reaches out more into the mainstream, Mainstream people understand numbers, you know, like uh, Alabama plays, you know, Notre Dame, this, this one plays that one, number one, number two, number three, and we think it would just be uh, a lot easier for casual fans who are just getting into the UFC to kind of understand the sport a little bit better. When you have a top ten ranking, you know, that's, that's literally what we all go by. Every, as long as we've been on this planet, the day you were born, to today, every time you open a sports section, you know, Boston Red Sox are in first place, Toronto's in last place. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, the, uh, you know as, as you go through, the, there's always rankings in everything, in every sport. Um, so, it just, it makes sense. But obviously these rankings are rankings within this company, which, you know, obviously is the dominant company in MMA, but there are other organizations that have This fighters. is just the UFC. Yeah. yeah, it's just the UFC ranking. Voted on by the media. It's a media poll, like 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 they do for USA Today. Yeah, How much clearance did you have to go through to get the camera in your operating room? What's that? To get the camera in the operating room. Was there a lot of clearance on oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Tons. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had to call right up to the top to get it. But why did you want that filmed? Why not? I, you know, there was so much talk about it, yeah. and, and, and there was so much, you know, whatever. And, and another cool thing, the doctor, Dr. House, who did the surgery. Dr. House? Yeah. <laughs> so, has dedicated his life to this disease. That's why I was on TV. Yeah. Raising money, doing all this other stuff. So, you know, they, they, he was big on awareness for this thing. Because usually, you know, hospitals are, there's totally. no way in hell. Yeah, no. And then doctors, too. It's, it's actually worse because... You know, that surgery, there's so much trauma during that. They drilled into my skull, you know, they're drilling. And, and on the video blog, it shows them drilling. You know, we're going to bore you with the entire fucking surgery. 25 minutes they drill for 25 minutes into the skull. So just that damage, the damage that was done to the ear, the skin, you know, your skin is like this thick, and they sew it back together from the inside out. I bumped into Dave Terrell at, at the Fox show. He had the same surgery, and he was telling me, that three months after the surgery, he started training again, and he would tape his ear <coughs> up with tape, drop it around his head, and he was training one day, and it went pop, pop, pop. And he felt, and he was in a lot of pain. All the stitches ripped open from the inside, but didn't open on the outside. So all that flesh in there broke apart after three months of healing. 
You don't have to worry about me, I won't be training that hard. <laughs> but the point is, this thing takes a long time to really heal and recover from. So who knows, and everybody has a different story. Took this guy too much. Basically, it's, I have this feeling now like I'm underwater. So I can't hear hardly anything. So it's hard, that's why sometimes I'll tilt this ear to you. What'd you say? It's tough to hear, it's been a pain in the ass, but I gotta deal with it. How are uh, ticket sales and members training for UFC 157 with Ronda Rousey? 157. I, yeah, I, the first so one fight I've done. I had an interview the other day with Dave Meltzer. Mm -hmm. I had that bone to pick with Meltzer. We <laughs> talked the other day. I said, what was up with that goofy story you wrote that made no sense? Basically saying Ronda Rousey headline is headlining the show and ticket sales aren't off the charts or whatever. Yet, they sold more tickets than the last time they were here at this time. It makes no sense. I don't understand what the story was. There was never a story there about there being a problem with ticket sales in, in, in Southern California when Ronda Rousey had on the card. And he wrote the story like two fights ago. We, had, we haven't even started promoting that fight yet. We have not started, we have not spent a dime or done anything to promote Ronda Rousey's fight. And at that time when he wrote the story, there was like $750,000 in ticket sales. Right? So things are working the way you expected, or are they, things are ramping up well? Yeah. I mean, obviously there's no promotion yet, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. This stuff drives me crazy. Well, I mean, we don't see the numbers. I hate, I hate to go here. I hate to go here, but you guys do this to me, man. You do it. It's like, Dave Meltzer writes that story, right? The fight's in Southern California. $750,000 in ticket sales. We still got four or five fights before that fight. Have not started promoting that fight yet. Seven hundred fifty. dollars Now, Bellator comes out, right, and they do their first show. Everybody's going, pasting Spike's press release all over the fucking place. It was a whole run. This fucking thing was awesome. We did this. They sold 2,400 fucking tickets in Southern California. If that's a fucking home run, holy shit. What did I hit? At 750,000. They sold 2,400 tickets. And I gotta, I'm got reading around on what a home run that event was. Are you fucking shitting me? How does that compare to other UFC events in Southern California? Is that is that normal or is that is that we don't see the numbers as you trend along like that? You don't usually yeah. this numbers so Dave Meltzer wrote it himself in his oddball story that he wrote. Yeah, but I don't really know. Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in ticket sales, which is more than they sold right. at this point in time last time they were here. Right. I can tell you this: we haven't even started promoting the Ronda Rousey fight yet, right? And when we do, Ronda Rousey, people can say whatever they want about her. People can say she shouldn't be headlining or whatever. I don't give a shit if you're Hoist Gracie, if you're Dan Henderson and Machida, Tito Chuck, go through the list, the laundry list of guys who have been stars in this company. Nobody in the history of this company will have more new media following them than Ronda Rousey will. Already the story she's done. Time Magazine, she's one of the 30 for 30 Forbes athletes in there with LeBron James and, and, and all these other guys. Um, <laughs> First on HBO. Real sports on HBO. Um, somebody else something up? Yeah, he said HBO. Oh yeah, real sports on HBO. And the list is, the LA Times is following her for a month of doing a front page story on her. The list goes on and on and on of media that have never ever covered this event or never giving us the coverage they're giving us for Ronda Rousey. In the history of the sport, not just in the 13 years we've been here, all the way back to the old days. Dana, in some ways, does that bother you? That it would have to be a female athlete to come in to generate that kind of response? If you had told me a year ago that a female athlete would get that kind of coverage, I'd have said, you're out of your mind. And if they did, it would be a freak show story. And it's far from a freak show. Tito Ortiz came out the other day and said, what has Ronda, R Ronda Rousey hasn't even proven herself yet. She hasn't even proven herself, she's getting all this. What the fuck? Tito was a junior college wrestler, okay? She's an Olympic athlete who fucking medaled at the Olympics, okay? Ronda Rousey's first nine fights have gone nine minutes and 28 seconds. Tito Ortiz's first nine fights went 40 minutes and 45 seconds. What the fuck are you talking about, Tito? 
She blows you out of the water when it comes to accomplishing things at the same point in your age and career. She smokes you, she buries you, she's in another universe. I get it, he's a manager now and he's gotta get out and say some goofy shit. <laughs> but at least, look, dude, come on. Do your homework, Tito. Dana, did you hear about this, uh, I guess, small controversy that they had uh, his Facebook friends with the one judge that scored a 30 to 27 for him? This kind of brings up the replacement referee New Orleans Saints story that came out when one ref was a Saints fan and he was gonna ref the game. And a lot of people don't think we'd have won the fight, so they're starting to think. That's like, interesting. How do you feel about that? I didn't know that. That's interesting. Is that should judges, referees, not be friends and on social media? With Let me tell. No, judges and referees shouldn't be friends with anybody in this business. Anybody, including you guys. So they, they, the, when you're a judge or a referee, you live on your own fucking island, man. Out. It's just. It's. It's part of the deal. You guys have heard me talk about Herb Dean, right? When I see Herb Dean at the, at the I say. I don't fucking, I don't want to talk to her. You're not going to see me out at dinner with her. You're not going to see me. I, I stay away from all the judges and referees. I don't talk to any of them. I don't talk. I say hi to them. You know, I say hi. I, 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 no fighters. No promoters. No, no media. So you don't think they should be on Twitter? Because Herb's on Twitter. If John's on Twitter. I don't think there's a big deal okay. with them being on Twitter. And listen, who gives a fuck what I think? This, this has nothing no, to do with me. This is the Athletic Commission's deal. But I don't think there's a problem with being on Twitter. And, you know, the pe people are fans of referees, too. You know, people do like the refs and whatever it is. When you're a fight fan, all that stuff is fun to follow a guy and what he might be doing. But I, I wouldn't <laughs> be talking about fights or specific fighters. And I wouldn't be following. Yeah, it's probably not a big deal to follow a bunch of fighters either. Just to see what Facebook friends. Yeah. It's a whole different world. Where's Josh Rosenthal? I don't know though. Facebook, what does Facebook friends mean? Well, you have to. <laughs> are you being serious? Do I'm dead serious. Oh, yeah, you have to, you know, I have to. Come. I have to like you. I say, yeah, yeah I, I, I know how it works. Accept. But what does it really mean? <laughs> oh, I don't I mean, if the guy has, you know, 500 friends, one of them's like weed and he's judging his fight, who knows what they're talking about behind Who knows how far back that relationship dates? Yeah. And now he's judging his fight. I mean, there's comp it's the same reason why Ricardo Almeida can't judge a Frankie Edgar fight, obviously on a different level, but right. who knows. I'm not saying this case, but it does lead to questions when there's a fight. The good point fight. That, that, that the Facebook and all this other shit, I don't know. Uh, being on social media, whatever, the good point that you really make here is fight camps, if you're a manager, trainer, and fighter, you have rights when it comes to the athletic commission. And they do post this stuff before. Like, when everybody asked me about Mazzagatti last week. Mazzagatti is ha headlining the show, okay? Gives a shit what I think. The fighters have to, you know, if you have an opinion and you believe, hey, this guy's friends on Facebook with him, right. how's that gonna work for me? These guys have to do their homework and look into stuff like that. You know what I mean? They have to. We're regulated by the government. The government comes in and does this stuff and puts them in place, but you, as a fighter, and as a camp, have rights to come in and say, hey, what the hell is this? This, this is questionable, and I want to make sure that I get a fair shake. And if that is the case, that this guy does have a relationship far back, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna do the right thing. If he even stays on, that they might yank him right. and put somebody else on. So that's really the point here yeah. to be made, is that the fighters and the, and the camps need to pay attention to that kind of stuff. But not all of them, because a lot of the referees say they only find out the night of what they're doing, so it's not always made 100% public, you know, like, an undercard fight like Guida Hioki is sometimes not made, you know, unless you make so a So get request. into it. Listen, yeah. you guys fucking terrorize the athletic commissions, calling them every day, asking them for this number, that number, did this guy test for this, what happened over here, what that's what these fighter camps could do the same thing. You know, they've got to start getting more professional and, and, and getting into this, and boxing? There were fucking wars over who was going to referee a fight and stuff. People would come out and, you know, it was a big deal. Camps would, would throw fits sometimes if, if they thought they weren't getting the right guy. And where are the judges from? Well, okay, this, this is an international fight. We got one guy from England, we got one guy from over here, and we got one guy from the United States. You know, a Las Vegas guy, local Las Vegas guy they do. You know, guys that were, uh, you know, used to doing big fights. These, these camps need to be more professional and really start looking into that stuff more. Because it does make a decision. I don't give a shit what anybody says. If Mazzagatti isn't the fucking ref, John Jones is undefeated right now. What and there's other things too with Mazzagatti. What about, uh, it seems to be coming out more and more, I don't know if guys are 
following the trend or whatnot, but it seems like a lot of sponsors, or some sponsors, aren't paying the fighters. Um, guys are taking to Twitter and saying, hey, I'm still waiting. There's one famous one, uh, a company that hasn't paid for months, a group of guys like Patrick Cote and, and others. Um, My guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, how do you... Who are the sponsors? Sponsors well, they Patrick got? Patrick Cote allowed? said Kaiwa hasn't Kaiwa, paid him yeah. since UFC 148. What's I don't Kaiwa? think Stefan Struve got paid. Kaiwa's K. It's just some brand that kind of popped up. So we approved it and let them do it? And now they don't pay. They so, well, how can they get around that? It's nothing to do with me. No, no, no. I'm saying, <laughs> what can the fighter do? Is it just they got screwed? Yeah. I mean, if, if you make a deal with somebody and they don't pay you, I mean, he's got to take them to court or do something like that. Do they but tell you this in confidence? Do fighters try to get I had no help? idea until so you just told me that. I didn't even know. When you were saying guys weren't getting paid by the sponsors, I'm like, in my show? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. not, not by sponsors that are affiliated with us, they're not. Bochek Meaning, just said he didn't get paid for one of the sponsors from 154, he just said on Twitter. So who was it? He wouldn't say right now. I don't know why he doesn't want to say. Well, if it's one of our major sponsors that are with us, you know. No, his own sponsors. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just wondering if fighters have come to you guys and said, can you help me? You know, maybe, you know. What the hell am I going to I don't know. Hey, hey Kaiwa, pay this guy as well. personally. <laughs> Bob Light, Harley Davidson. Sure, of course. Uh, and, and the list goes on and on. Don't pay the guys when they're supposed to pay a guy. I'll pick up the phone and say, sure, are you kidding it's me? It's usually the rinky-dink, you know, right. fly-by-night company. So there's nothing they can That's do. That's the problem with doing these deals with rinky-dink fly-by-night companies. It's, it's tough. It's, you never know if you're going to go out and, and do, uh, get your money up front. Pay me now. I'm going to fight. I got three fights. I'm in the UFC. I'm going to fight and I'm going to wear your stuff. Pay me some money. Uh, get back to the ref thing. Where's Josh Rosenthal then? I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 uh, yeah, I didn't even realize. You didn't know if he was still in the mix or not. Yeah. This, again, not yeah. decisions that I make. You know, I bitch a lot, but <laughs> I don't make any decisions. Yeah, can you give us uh, your Super Bowl pick? My Super Bowl pick? I think San Francisco is going to win, but I'd love to see Ray win one before he retires. Another one, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's good to go out with the Super Bowl. Did you guys see his story on ESPN that they did? About his yeah. dad and everything? Great story. If you didn't see it, watch it. Fox will kill me for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you done with me? Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.